Methanol can be manufactured in a reversible reaction as shown. So you can see we've got carbon monoxide reacting with hydrogen gas in a 1 to 2 ratio, producing methanol in a reversible reaction, and the enthalpy change for this reaction is negative, which means it is exothermic. The graph below shows how the partial pressures change with time at a constant temperature. Draw a cross on the appropriate axis of the graph when the mixture reaches equilibrium. And first of all, the appropriate axis of the graph is the x-axis because we're effectively being asked for the time when equilibrium has been reached. And so you can see that each of the different chemicals are represented. We've got the two reactants. So this line is for hydrogen, the solid line. And you can see that that goes down really, really steeply at first, starts to level out and then becomes flat. That means that the partial pressure of hydrogen is not changing after about this point. Similarly, carbon monoxide, which is the dotty line, goes down quickest at the beginning, but not quite so quickly as hydrogen does, and then it levels out and then it stops moving and changing after about this point here. And then the opposite way around for the dashed line for methanol, it goes up steeply, slows down, and then stops changing after about here. Incidentally, the carbon monoxide and hydrogen go down at different rates because of that one to two ratio. Hydrogen's partial pressure will go down faster. And so we're looking at about here on the x-axis. It needs to be marked on the line or just below the line and the partial pressures need to not be changing anymore. In B, we're told that a 0.23 mole sample of carbon monoxide is mixed with hydrogen in a 1 to 2 mole ratio. That is a very strange way of saying that there must be twice as much hydrogen as there is carbon monoxide. So in other words, we are starting with 0.46 moles of hydrogen. Then it's allowed to reach equilibrium in a sealed flask at temperature T. At equilibrium, the mixture contains 0.12 moles of carbon monoxide. That's gone down from 0.23. The total pressure of this mixture is 1.04 times 10 to the 4 kilopascals. Calculate the partial pressure in kilopascals of hydrogen in the equilibrium mixture. To calculate the partial pressure of hydrogen, we need to take the total pressure and multiply it by the mole fraction of hydrogen gas. And so since we know the total pressure already, they Last but one step that we need to do is to calculate the mole fraction of hydrogen. And the mole fraction of anything is the moles of that thing divided by the total equilibrium moles. And so that means that the first thing that we need to do is work out the equilibrium moles of all the chemicals in our closed system. I always like to structure my equilibrium calculations like this, so either directly underneath the equation or quickly rewrite the equation and set on the left hand side the initial moles of each of these chemicals. So we were told 0.23 moles of carbon monoxide and we've worked out 0.46 moles of hydrogen. We haven't been told anything about methanol, so we assume that that is zero at the start. And then at equilibrium, we've gone down to 0.12 moles of carbon monoxide. This is a change of 0.11 moles. So the carbon monoxide has gone down by 0.11 moles. And so simply with that fact, we can take the initial moles of all the remaining chemicals, look at the change and work out what the equilibrium moles must be. So for hydrogen, since we started with 0.46 moles of hydrogen, the change for hydrogen is going to be 0.11 multiplied by 2 because of that 1 to 2 ratio between carbon monoxide and hydrogen. And so hydrogen will have gone down to 0.24 moles at equilibrium. Methanol will have a change of 0.11. And that's because the ratio of methanol to carbon monoxide is one to one. So in other words, carbon monoxide will go down just as much as methanol goes up. And so that means we have 0.11 moles of methanol at equilibrium. 
And so the total moles at equilibrium is simply the sum of those three values, which is 0 0.47. And from there, we work out the mole fraction of hydrogen, that value of 0 0.24 divided by 0 0.47, which is 0 0.511, or just 0 0.51. And finally, the partial pressure of hydrogen is the answer that we just got for mark number three, multiplied by the total pressure, and that gets us a value of 5,310 kilopascals, or if you prefer to have it in standard form, 5.31 times 10 to the 3 kilopascals. We weren't given any specific instruction, so either of those two is absolutely fine. Then in C, we are asked to give an expression for the equilibrium constant Kp for this reaction and to state the units. Well, the equilibrium expression always has the partial pressure of the products on the top and the partial pressures of the reactants on the bottom. And so specifically, Kp is equal to the partial pressure of methanol, and that little Pp at the beginning means partial pressure. There is no power for methanol because there is a 1 in front of it in the equation. And then on the bottom, we need the partial pressure of carbon monoxide. Again, no power because its coefficient is a 1. And then the partial pressure of hydrogen comes last of all, multiplying that carbon monoxide's partial pressure by the partial pressure of hydrogen. And we need to square that partial pressure because there is a 2 in front of hydrogen in the equation. Sometimes it's absolutely fine to put a small p for partial pressure, but I like to use the double p just to make absolutely clear that I'm not accidentally writing the symbol of an element. It is the partial pressure. What you absolutely must not do is use square brackets because that shows that you're getting a bit confused with kc. The units for kp in this expression are going to be pascals to the minus 2 or kilopascals to the minus 2 to be precise and to work that out we have kilopascals on the top of our fraction and then kilopascals multiplied by kilopascals multiplied by kilopascals on the bottom of our fraction that cancels down a little bit and that leaves us with 1 over kilopascals squared and because we're not allowed to have two line fractions for our units we need to bring that kilopascals up to the top and it becomes kilopascals to the minus 2. Some more carbon monoxide is added to the equilibrium mixture in part B. The new mixture is allowed to reach equilibrium at temperature T, so in other words, the same temperature as before. State the effect, if any, on the partial pressure of methanol and on the value of Kp. Well, if we increase the carbon monoxide concentration, and carbon monoxide is a reactant, the equilibrium is going to shift to use some of that carbon monoxide up, so it will shift to the right-hand side and it will produce more methanol. And so the partial pressure of methanol will go up. But whilst the partial pressure of methanol increases, the value of Kp actually will not change. There will be no effect on the value of Kp. The short justification for that is that it is only temperature that will ever affect the value of an equilibrium constant. The slightly more detailed explanation is that this suggested increase in the value of Kp is offset precisely by the decrease in the value of Kp, which comes from the actual increase in partial pressure of carbon monoxide itself because if you increase a value on the bottom of a fraction, that fraction will get smaller. So if we just take that carbon monoxide increase in isolation, we might think that Kp should in fact go down. But if you couple that with the equilibrium shifting to the right, which makes us think that the equilibrium constant should go up, those two effects will cancel each other out precisely and therefore only temperature affects the value of Kp or any equilibrium constant because it shifts the equilibrium without adjusting anything in the equilibrium constant fraction. And then last of all, state the effect, if any, of the addition of a catalyst on the value of Kp for this equilibrium. Explain your answer. 
Well, I've already said that only temperature affects the value of Kp or any equilibrium constant, so the mark number one is going to be no effect on the value of Kp. The specific explanation in this setting is that catalysts will increase the rate of the forward and the backward reaction equally or by the same amount. And the reason that they do that is they decrease the activation energy equally for the forwards and the backwards direction. We could alternatively say simply that catalysts don't affect the position of equilibrium, so won't affect the value of Kp. Or we could give a, a more mathematical justification about there is no recognition of catalysts in the Kp expression. Any of those is absolutely fine, but it is particularly important that we remember that only temperature affects the value of an equilibrium constant. Okay, that's the end of this question. I hope it was useful. I'll see you again soon.